This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Most often when we're creating a form, we're going to start off with an existing template that we've created in another program, such as Word or Excel, or in this case, InDesign. Or we may have started with something that we've previously scanned in. In either case, we're going to want to try to auto-recognize the form fields, and Acrobat does a pretty good job of this. In this file, we'll start by opening the Tools pane and choosing the Forms category. Under Forms, we'll choose Create. This is the same as choosing File Create PDF Forms from the menu, and it brings us back to the dialog we saw in the previous video. We have the choice to use an existing file, and that's what we'll choose here. When we click Next, we'll choose to use the current document, which is the one that's displayed in our window, and we'll click Next again. Acrobat is now warning us that it's going to go into form editing mode. The toolbars are going to change, and we'll need to choose Close Form Editing in order to get out of that mode. Acrobat searched and it detected some form fields. Let's see what it got. And it did a pretty good job of recognizing text fields where we had the blank lines in this document. Each field is highlighted, and it has a label which it's picked up from the text next to the underline. In these areas, we'll want to add checkboxes and radio buttons. You can try adding bullet or box characters or shapes in front of the text to see if it will pick up those fields, but I've had mixed results with that approach. We'll go ahead and create them manually anyway as a learning exercise in this video series. For now, we've created a number of text fields, and we can begin working with these immediately. We'll zoom in here and take a closer look. Here's the first name field, and if you recall from earlier videos on working with objects, and in particular buttons, you'll recall that we can simply double click on an object to open the property inspector for this field. We can see the name and the tooltip, which were both picked up from the text next to this field. This field has no border and no fill. We could add a rectangle border or a colored box if we wanted to. Notice the text font size is set to auto. We could choose a specific font size if we wanted, but for text boxes where our users will be typing, the auto parameter will adjust the font size on the fly so that the entire type text fits within the visible field. If the text starts to overflow from the box, the font size will shrink automatically to accommodate it. So for most cases, with type in fields, we can leave this set to auto. That's all we need here. We'll leave the rest as is and click close. Now we want these boxes a little smaller, so we can simply grab the handles and drag to resize them as you see here. When we get to the address field, we know that we want a zip code that's going to have a five digit format. And we have the ability to restrict the format by double clicking this field and within the properties dialog we can click on the format tab. Here we can choose a format to constrain the enter text to a predefined format. There are several in here and we can choose special and find a number of formats already created for us including zip code. We'll choose that one and click close and this will constrain this field to a five digit zip code. In the phone number field, we can do something similar. We'll double click the phone field and go again to the format tab. We'll choose the special type, and in this case, we'll choose phone number. And this will give us an entry in the phone number format, which includes parentheses for the area code and a hyphen in the last seven digits. Finally, for the email field, We'll change this field to make it required. So if we double click this and go to the General tab, we can click on Required. Anyone filling out this form must include a value for this field before submitting the form. OK, we're finished resizing, and we'll zoom out to fit the document in the screen and see what we've accomplished. Now we have these text fields arranged as we want them. We can double click on any of the rest of them to bring up the properties and tweak them as we see fit. For example, tidying up the tool tips here. Specify your unique interests.
We've created a document full of interactive text fields with a minimum of effort. Now we can click on Close Form Editing and go back to the regular Acrobat mode and we can try these fields out. We can see that the Highlight button will turn the blue color on and off for all of our fields. And we can test these fields out by typing some words in here. If we enter a zip code and try to enter alpha characters, we get an error warning and nothing will appear. And if we try to enter fewer than five digits and tab away from the field, we get an error dialog box. So it wants us to type in the full five digits as requested. For the phone number, again, if we type in our 10-digit phone number and tab away, we can see the number is properly formatted as soon as we move away from the field. We'll go ahead and save this document for now. We'll choose Save As PDF and we'll call it CFO Membership Working.pdf. We'll leave this document open and we'll continue from this point in the next video.